Hey traders, Chris here, welcome back. So last week we did a trade review. This week being the end of the quarter, we are doing our quarterly performance review. So I'm gonna share with you all my stats, my accuracy, profitable months, how we're doing the year, how did we manage the pullback in the markets in late February and early March? Did we maintain the same level of accuracy? Were we profitable every single month? How did we do? We're gonna share it with you here. So just a couple things here, as you can see, it's the same login details and the same trade distribution as we had last year. So if this was a different account, it would have different details for last year. It's the exact same trade distribution, it's the same account, and we're just kind of showing you the stats on that. So last year, you could see our profit for the year here under this 2020 here. And so you can see that we had you know a strong year, it was a profitable year, but you can see in 20. 2021, we are almost at the same level of profitability we had as last year. So we've almost made as much money as we did last year, and we're only three months into this year. You can also see that while we did 502 trades last year, we're already at 285 trades for the year. So we've increased trade frequency. I'm gonna share with you in a little bit why we increased our trade frequency. Scrolling down here, you can see in terms of profitable months, January, very strong month. February, even better, it was our best month uh, of the last two years. And then March, even though it was a challenging month, we still made a profit in the month of March. So I'm proud considering that we had a fair amount of our portfolio exposed to the big sell-off in tech and the big sell-off in the markets. And yet through all that, and through adjusting a lot of our portfolio, we were able to pull out a decent profit. So I'm proud of that here. Here we are showing the PL for the last 90 days. Actually, it's a little bit more than that. I'm curious if it does the last 90 trading days because 90 days should be the beginning of the year. Anyways, beginning of the year floats in around here. And as you can see, we've made money. Although we have in the last couple months, you know, with the adjustments in the portfolio, with the market selling off pretty aggressively, we were able to manage a profit, but we definitely had to adjust positions and take some losses during that period. So only a mild profit in March, which you're seeing reflected here. You can also see some of that rebalancing over here. Otherwise we were doing strong, very strong heading into early March. And then we had to start adjusting our portfolio. But this correction that you see here and this just slight gains and adjustment here where things move a little bit sideways, so looking at that corrective structure that we'd seen in the PL, this is where a lot of it happened here. So we had a huge sell-off in Qs and in tech, and we had a very strong tech portfolio going into this year in the early part of this quarter. So when this started to sell off, a huge portion of our portfolio started to lose money. So we had to reduce positions in some, cut some losses in one, also readjust some of our focus and rebalance into other sectors. And so the fact that we ended up profitable in March, I feel like we did a good job of playing defense when the time came. But with this big sell-off is part of the reason why we definitely had to adjust. Now, in terms of the calendar, as you can see, January is a pretty smooth month, only a few losing days. February, also very smooth, only a few losing days. March, this is where we had a big adjustment in our portfolio. You can see a lot more losing months. The Saturdays are just option positions that are closing. So any options that expire worthless, they count as a loss on that Saturday. But outside of that, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven losing days, not including those Saturdays. So our most losing days in the last two years, and yet we still ended up profitable. I'm gonna explain in a little bit, how is that possible? How do we have so many losing days and yet still ended up profitable for the month of March? Okay, so looking at some other stats here, as you can see, our accuracy is 61.3%. How is that possible if we took a fair amount of losses in March or more than usual? I will explain that in a little bit. I think we ended up last year at 61.5%, so pretty much exactly the same. But a couple notes of some improvements Profit factor was 3.32 last year. It's now up to 3.41. And K ratio was at, I think, 141, and now it's 1.97. So improvements on both of those across the board. For those of you who don't know, profit factor is basically your gross profits divided by your gross loss. So if we had, if our total losses added up by themselves were $100,000 with a profit factor of 3.41, that means we made in our, all our wins $341,000. So 3.41 times the amount of money that we lost, we made that much in gains. And as you can tell mathematically, that means we made money. K ratio is just, it examines the consistency basically of your equities return or performance over time. And so the fact that our number went up meant that it was much more stable than it was last year. Even though last year's was solid, it's gotten even more stable this year. And that's through 
the March challenging period. So overall, very positive statistic. Okay, looking at days and times, as you can see right here, I'm still profitable every single day of the week. That means every single day of the week, if you add up all the trades for those days, I'm profitable on every single day. Our largest trade distributions tend to be on Wednesday and Thursday, which is kind of not surprising. Options can expire on Fridays. We may take a lot of positions or rebalance a lot of positions on Wednesday and Thursday. Although Tuesday is our most profitable month, that's when we generally see a lot of moves really starting to kind of build and accelerate in the trends for that week start to develop. So not surprising on that one. And then the last one here, this is just showing every single green dot is a winning trade and every single red dot is a losing trade. As you can see, the losses are relatively contained. Even when we had one that we held for a long period of time, it was still relatively contained. And yet all our wins are much larger on the upside than the losses and there's more of them. So again, showing you that we continue to improve in our performance and continue to trade well, make more money when we win, win more times than we lose, that's a formula for profitability. Okay, so I wanna do some analysis. You know, the first thing I wanna talk about is trade frequency. Why is trade frequency up so much? Why are we already at about 40, maybe 50%, maybe even, I think we're over 50% of last year's trade frequency. That means we're trading a lot more. Why is that? Well, first, this year, in the very beginning of the year, we committed to kind of expanding our tool set and skill set a little bit. And so we've added some new stock strategies, some new option trading strategies, and you combine that with the fact that we're experimenting a little bit more scalping. I'm not saying I'm gonna become a scalper, but I want to take some time to explore it a little bit more, learn what I can from it, and then decide, is this something I wanna to add to my toolbox or not? And what can I take from that experience? So when you put all that together, more scalping, which means more day trading, plus the new stock trading strategies that we We've added to our arsenal and the new option strategies. The bottom line is that's just gonna add up to a lot more trade frequency. So last year we did about 502 trades. This year I'm expecting well over a thousand trades. We should be averaging about a hundred per month. So obviously it depends upon markets. We were a little less active in March in terms of taking new trades. However, we were active in terms of rebalancing some of our portfolio. So overall, I think we're gonna probably at least double last year's trade frequency, which I really want to. I wanna to continue to increase my trade frequency until I find that sweet spot of like, okay, this is where I'm at. The other thing I wanna talk about is profit factor is up and K ratio was up from like 1.41 to 1.97. And yet accuracy was almost identical. How is that possible with March only being mildly profitable? How did we take in more losses than usual in March and end up profitable? Well, what that means is, is that when we're losing, we're losing small, and we're winning, we're winning big, or at least way bigger than we are when we're losing. So that means that our account has a certain sense of durability. The fact that we are generally around 60 plus percent accuracy, even if we take a fair amount of losses, we still have so much buffer between us and break even, that we'd have to go way down in accuracy and we'd have to start losing more than we are right now per trade and winning less than we are per trade to actually be at break even. So we have such a good buffer right now that even if our performance dips a little bit, we're still making money. That's a durable system. That's a durable strategy. What it also means is that if accuracy is 61.3% now, and we took a fair amount of losses from our portfolio in March, that means that leading into March, we were above 61.3% accuracy because the new losses brought it down. If I remember correctly, the last I had checked at the end of February, we were clocking in at almost 64%. I think it was like 63.5%. So we've gone down about 2% in accuracy to end up where we did last year. If a losing period or a challenging period means that your accuracy only shifts a couple percent, that's a sign of a strong system. That's a sign of strong skills and adaptability. Also, the fact that we've almost made as much money as we did last year and yet it's only the first quarter. How is that possible? Well, we have increased our position size and we're probably gonna be increasing again sometime in Q2. And so that in combination with winning more per trade and you increase the trade frequency, that just adds to the overall profitability. It also means that we had an absolutely gangster January and February. February is amazing. And then in March, the fact that we had to adjust so much in our portfolio, in some of our positions, and still being a profit, it means that we play good defense when we need to play good defense. And then January and February, when we need to play offense, we played offense. So in closing, we had another profitable quarter. We didn't have a single losing month. And while March threw us some curveballs for sure in the bear markets and the big sell-off, 
I wouldn't say that the bear market was necessarily a curveball per se, but it was such a broad-based sell-off in a lot of the things that we had concentration in our portfolio. So with all those curveballs and adjustments, I feel like we adjusted and adapted really well. The fact that we had a slight decrease in accuracy and still came out in the green. Adaptability is key in markets. Fixed strategies do not adapt well. Quant strategies did not do well in 2007 and 8. They also did bad last year. Jim Simmons, Renaissance Capital, amazing trader, one of the best trade records of all time. He struggled last year. They lost money last year because their quantitative algorithms couldn't adjust to the market. And that's the thing. Fixed strategies and fixed rules don't necessarily adapt well to all environments. Skills adapt. Experience adapts. Fixed rules do not. I feel like overall, we play good offense when we needed to, when the markets are hot. And when the markets are pulling back, we did a good job on defense. I also feel like we did a good job recalibrating a lot of our portfolio while reducing risks. And in reducing the size of the portfolio, that's kind of the net effect. Normally I'm running about 24 open positions at any given time. And that's not including the day trades that I'll take in that given day. Right now we're only running 18. So our portfolio is slightly smaller than usual. But what does that leave us room for? It allows us room to build new positions on our portfolio and also have more capital for day trading. So if the markets start to get strong again and we start increasing our activity in day trading, then we have a lot more capital available to leverage towards that. And we can also start building out new positions as well. And we have, we've already been building out some really good swing trades for Q2. And we've even built up some trades that are gonna kind of close in Q3 and Q4. So we really have kind of set ourselves up using March as kind of a readjustment period to set ourselves up for the next month, the next quarter, and the rest of the year while also leaving a fair amount of capital to get aggressive in day trading should the market start to turn really strong. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and us sharing our stats and sharing our performance and how we're trading. Many of you have wondered, you know, hey, how come you don't show your PL? And as I said in the 2020 performance video, how much I make is not your business. That's my personal finances. Whether I made 100,000 in the last quarter, 200,000 or 500,000, it's not your business. The bottom line is that the stats show that I make money trading we're continuing to share our stats. We do well when the markets are hot and even when they're struggling, we still adapt well. So if you'd like to learn how I'm able to post a 61 plus percent accuracy with a strong profit factor, check out my trading masterclass where I teach you the exact same strategies I use day in, day out, along with sharing my trades. The same trades that you saw in my performance are the same trades that I share with my members. With that being said, I hope to be working with you soon. And until then, Good luck trading, and I hope you have another profitable quarter. Take care, everyone.